Hello, my name is Kim Poe. I'm the Children and Young Adult Consultant with the Connecticut State Library, and welcome to CT Pages, your spot on YouTube where you hear from other Connecticut librarians, programs and services that they are utilizing in their community so you can take a page from another library's book. Today we have Aubrey from the Canterbury Library who's going to tell us about these awesome memory kits we heard about on the listserv. So um, take it away. I'm, I'm excited to hear it. Thank you, Kim. Um, so this is a relatively new project that we started. Um, we had, well, I had actually applied to the American Library Association's um, Libraries Transforming Communities Focus on Small and Rural Libraries Grant Round 2 back in March, um, which awarded the recipients with $3,000 each to carry out um, specific programs. And I had come up with this idea um, after talking to a number of our library users, as well as our um, senior municipal, municipal agent for the elderly and our first selectman here. Um, a little going back before COVID, we had started off with um, a how to prevent burnout um, program for caregivers and kind of like a dementia 101 program. Um, before I became a librarian, I have a background in healthcare. I worked as an occupational therapy assistant for a couple of years, um, and I worked specifically with um, over 65 and dementia patients. Um, so I really wanted to take that experience and see how I could use it for um, this type of library setting in this community. Um, that program had gone really well, got a lot of really great feedback, and what stemmed from that was we started a caregiver support group here, um, but unfortunately we were only able to hold it for two months before COVID happened and everything shut down, <laughs> um, which, you know, a lot of libraries faced um, in 2020. So that kind of sat in the back of my head and when it came to this grant, I started thinking, you know, what what can we do to help our community with and by offering something that we don't already have? Um, so a lot of patrons, when we reopened the library um, and we were doing curbside service, a lot of them mentioned that um, it would be great if we could do some more um, dementia programming or start up a caregiver support group again. Um, maybe we could get more resources because Unfortunately, the couple of books that we had on Alzheimer's and dementia um, were pretty outdated um, and we hadn't gotten anything in quite a while. So I knew that that was one area where I could focus um, this grant on. And I also had found online that several other libraries across the whole country had started doing these memory kits for um, folks with dementia, but also to benefit the caregivers and family members of people with dementia. Um, so as I dug into it a little bit and, and contacted some different libraries and looked on their catalogs and things and saw what types of items they included in their kits, um, it really resonated with what people were asking for here. And it just seemed like a really great opportunity to use my experience um, treating people with various dementias um, and really combine it with, with what everybody wanted and hopefully could be a great benefit to the community. Um, so I applied for the grant um, with the focus being mainly on um, money to provide items for these memory kits. Um, I was able to justify it um, basically because I talked with the municipal agent for the elderly here. Um, she did let me know that she has a really limited budget and she's also only here about 10 hours a week. So two hours or two days a week for a total of 10 hours. Um, and her services and budget really focus more on like the uh, senior potlucks and crafts, not on more healthcare related programming. Um, I also talked with our first selectman in town and he was able to give me um, some local demographic data. And basically Canterbury, if, if anybody knows this town, it's a really small, really rural town. Um, we don't have a lot of big industry here and it's mostly agricultural. So we don't 
we don't currently have a whole lot of um, resources geared towards adults over 65 in general. So I knew that this was an area that we should focus on. Um, and on top of that, we have even fewer resources for people with dementia. Um, and while I was doing some quick research for the grant, I noticed that some of the data was really surprising. Um, for example, there's almost 6 million Americans with dementia currently in the United States, and 83% of the caregivers um, of people with dementia go unpaid for their services because it's usually family members, friends, neighbors, um, and this data came from the Alzheimer's Association. So I knew that we were facing a big need in the community. Um, so I got that data from the first selectman and I spun it all together into the grant application to justify how we could use this money and how the community would really benefit from it. Um, so part of the grant included having community discussions or a community forum so that we could get feedback from our community members as to what specifically they wanted to see us add to our collection, add to our services. Um, so we had two conversations and we were able to partner up with the Alzheimer's Association Connecticut chapter for one of them. And then we partnered with the local um, senior resources and a local elder law attorney for the other one um, so that we could kind of spin it into both a program to address questions in general, but also so we could get feedback from the community. And a lot of people showed up for the second one. Um, and there was definitely overall a need for help. Um, a lot of these people identified themselves as caregivers or family members of people with dementia and they were stuck and they didn't know where to go or what to do. Um, so we knew that we had a problem and we needed to address it. So it kind of solidified the whole grant process. Um, so after that, I put everything together and I ended up making my main goal, um, focusing on the memory kits. Um, so we ended up doing six memory kits. Um, I think out of the $3,000 budget, I believe I've spent about 1300 on the memory kits and the items for the memory kits. Um, again, we were really fortunate to get a grant, but I feel like libraries could do this with more limited resources. Um, you might just have to be a little bit more savvy. Um, I did actually include some donated CDs and books in the, the kits as well. Um, so it wasn't just things that I had purchased outright with the grant. We also were lucky to have a, another private donation from a community member, um, which did supplement a little bit more of this um, as well. So we were really fortunate in that regard. So the memory kits, um, they're, they kind of have multiple purposes. Um, they include sensory items, which um, either things that, that people can smell. So I have some jars with um, like lavender petals or rosebuds, um, scented candles. Um, they ha I have different things in there that people can touch and manipulate with their hands. Um, they can see, they can hear. Um, and this all really helps initiate memory recall, and it can also help stimulate conversations with friends, family, caregivers, whoever it is that's using the kit with them. Um, it's also been shown that having sensory items can help reduce things like stress and anxiety and depression and boredom among people who have different um, dementia-related illnesses, and they can also help reduce any um, difficult behaviors that may come along with the later stages of dementia. The kits also include um, conversation cards so that caregivers and family members can use them to actually initiate conversation. Um, there are different puzzles and games. So one of the difficulties I had when putting together the memory kits was, how do I gear each of these kits towards everybody? Because People with dementia can kind of be, you know, they can be, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> they can have mild dementia, they can have moderate, 
they can have severe. So they have limited abilities depending on what stage they're in. Um, so I tried to aim every kit or fill every kit with various items to address all of the different stages of dementia so that it's really, um, you know, it can be used by everybody. Um, so some of the puzzles are like 35 pieces. Some of them are 100 pieces. It really just depends. Um, so that way, whoever is doing it doesn't necessarily get frustrated and angry and upset um, and they feel like they can complete something. Um, the same thing with the games. I included different um, games of different diff diff difficulty levels. Um, and I also included different um, CDs and movies. So the CDs were kind of going along with each kit that has a theme. Um, I'm going to actually do uh, a show and tell with one of the kits in a moment. So everybody will kind of get an idea of, of what I mean. Um, but so, for example, we have a, a nature kit. Um, so the CD that I included in that one is like a woodland tranquil um, CD. So it kind of goes along with that feel. And um, movies, we focused on movies that were from like the mid 1900s um, that were popular during that time that could maybe bring back some memories, um, you know, provide entertainment. I also included um, large print fiction books for seniors, um, as well as photography books on certain subjects and little um, fidget widgets so that um, it would give them something to do with their hands. And I also included resources for caregivers because that's really, really important. Um, and I think the biggest thing of note, if anybody's looking to replicate a memory kit, is to get reusable items um, because that keeps the cost down significantly. Um, we ordered several different aqua paint kits that you can find on Amazon. Um, it literally is just a pack of five prints and you stick a paintbrush in there, you can use water and they can just paint with the paintbrush on, it colors the picture, um, but it's reusable. So it's not like every time we get the kit back, we have to throw it out and then add a new a new um, paint set in. Um, the same with the, a lot of the games like uh, bingo, we have word searches, they all come on laminated cards with a white erase marker so that they can just easily be reused again and again. Um, so I will take apart our first kit and explain a couple of the different items in there. So the first thing we have in this one kit, um, this one is just called Memory Lane. It's kind of a general um, kit to stimulate memory recall and conversation. Um, we have a game in here and it's a match up the sayings game. So all of the pieces are foam, they're large print, um, and there's an answer sheet in here. So it's easy for the person with dementia to manipulate the pieces, um, and there's an answer sheet. So if they get stuck and they need hints, it's not like it's gonna be frustrating trying to <laughs> figure out the answers. And then I have this fidget board. Um, so this is pretty cool. So it has all different types of little knobs and things that they can manipulate with their hands. There's zippers, there's different um, locking mechanisms and things. So depending on where they're at in their dementia, this might be good um, just to kind of play around with and, and decrease boredom and give them something to do with their hands. So then we have um, a DVD. So this is a mix of jukebox favorites from the 50s and 60s. <laughs> so this is always fun. Um, so this actually has four discs in it, so it could provide hours of, of listening. And then we have um, a, a movie in here. Uh, you can't take it with you. So again, this is more for the entertainment side. And then we have conversation cards, which is what I had mentioned. Um, so these are great because they help with reminiscing and storytelling, um, especially if the person with dementia is not as verbal, um, if they're in later stages. Um, 
each card has a photo on it with the the word underneath of what it is and then they have on the back side they have different questions that caregivers or family members can ask so it's a really good um, prompt to use then for books we have a large print memory lane 1950s um, they're all black and white photos but it goes over all different types of things music leaders um, movies sports in the 50s large print big photos i also included a memories 1960s book um, to make sure we were getting various age groups so this one's in color um, lots of nice pictures easy to flip through we have a 1950s at the movies um, so this one is more large print question and answer type of thing. Um, this would be really good for a family member or a caregiver to go over with their loved one and ask them different questions to help kind of jog their memory about um, movies during that time period, especially if they're a big movie buff. And then we have a, um, an activity book that caregivers can use called Memory Lister for dementia patients. Um, and it basically just gives you different word games. So one is name a word beginning with the letter A, B, C, D, et cetera. Um, this is really great for just helping jog the memory again. Let's see. So these are great. Um, these are large print senior fiction books. Um, they're really thin, so they're not a lot of pages. Um, I think this one is about 48 pages total. Um, each of them have a different theme. This one is a day at the beach. Um, it's just nice for somebody who is maybe in the early stages, uh, stages of dementia. Um, it gives them something that's challenging, but not overwhelming, like regular large print books can be that are 500 pages. We have a jog in your noggin book, and this one is all the way from the twenties through the seventies. Um, so another great, um, kind of word puzzles and word games that anybody could do with somebody with dementia and they have answers on each page. And then, let's see. I've got little, um, these little metal like fidget puzzles. Um, I bought an entire pack of these and just divided them up in each kit. So they can fidget with them, they can try to solve them. Um, I did include a puzzle solution sheet in each one where I highlighted so that way they could figure it out if it gets too frustrating. And then we have a um, word search game. So this is the one that I was talking about that has the laminated cards and then the um, wet erase marker so that they can just be wiped off and reused again and again. Um, this brand is great, it's keeping busy. Um, I found a lot of these on Amazon and they were very affordable. Um, I actually bought quite a few of these. They have bingo, they have um, crossword puzzles, they have all different kinds of, of um, games available online for people. And then I included a jigsaw puzzle. So this one is the fair is in town. Um, this is a 35 piece puzzle and the brand is Relish. Um, they make lots of dementia specific items such as puzzles and games. Um, so it's, you know, large pieces, easy to grab and it's only 35 pieces. So if somebody is kind of has more advanced dementia. It won't be as frustrating. Um, and I just want to note too with these kits that while they are geared towards folks with dementia. Um, they can also be used by anybody with um, like sensory processing disorders or anybody with any sort of um, disability um, because they include so many sensory items and large print items and things that are easy to grab and hold on to. So we're kind of marketing that, you know, they're not just for people with dementia. They're really for everybody. Um, so that's basically what's in each kit um every kit varies again depending on the theme um we have a, a tinkering one that has um like a tool magnetic puzzle it has um different large print books about 
um, antique cars and home improvement. So I really just tried to focus on what interests there might be and, and go with that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I, I, it's almost like, where do you start? I'm going to start by saying this is amazing. And thank you so much for taking some time out of your morning to be here with us. Um, my goodness gracious. Um, so I think the, the first thing that, I, that I'm interested in, so I, I can imagine that the grant process can feel daunting. And you did say that it was a grant in addition to some donations and things that were able to help you put these together. What, what was the grant process like? Was it, was it on a, a scale of one to 10? Um, you know, 10 being I just don't even want it and zero being I can do it in 10 minutes, you know, like just what's the gauge there? Yeah. So I would say, um, it was probably a six. Um, it, it did take quite a, a good amount of time for me to write the actual grant application. Um, and I just want to say too, this was only my second grant application I've ever done. Um, and the first one that I've ever personally received on behalf of any organization. Um, so if I can do it, I feel like anybody can do it. Um, the biggest thing was just diving into some of the local data to back up my request for the money for what I was doing. Um, and the other part of it was just collaborating with, um, with our town hall leaders, our municipal agent. Um, they really helped. The um, municipal agent wrote me a letter of support for it. And that was huge. Um, I had to also submit, I think like an example um, itinerary for one of the community conversations. I had to submit um, some advertising mock-ups and things like that, as well as goals and how I planned to implement everything and my budget. Um, but overall, it was very doable. Um, I, I think they're in round three right now. I'm not sure if they're still accepting applications or not for this grant, but go for it. Absolutely go for it because you never know if you're, you know, it, it could be successful and it's worth it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's almost like a you never know until you try kind of situation. And, you know, it, it seems like there aren't so many like, um, I guess, like barrier barriers, right? Like it's just kind of like diving for the information and compiling it and kind of going from there. And when you were describing these, and even just now when you mentioned the, um, the grant process, you mentioned a couple partners. I mean, what, what was it like? Like, did you just kind of send some emails, do some cold calls? Um, I know partnerships can be difficult for some people, but it's especially interesting to hear um, about places like Canterbury and like our first CT pages with Mary Beth and Easton where it's so rural. And like you mentioned, there's no infrastructure. Like Easton has, has the, one, the one sandwich shop, which is also <laughs> the one gas station and which might be at the one stoplight. So, um, so what, what what was that like to, did you already know these people? What was it? So in Canterbury, um, again, like you said, we're very small. I think our population is around 5,000 total for the whole town. Um, and we're considered up in the quiet corner of the state. Um, but luckily our library is in the same building complex as the town hall and a large community room. Um, that we can also use for programming, which is great. So we have a really good relationship already established with um, the town hall employees, so including the first selectman. Um, so I was able to just walk over to his office and kind of explain what was what was going on, what I was thinking of doing. He was all for it because, I mean, who doesn't want free money? Um, and he gladly offered me a printout of the demographic data. And he said, you know, whatever else you need, just let me know and I can try to get it. Um, kind of the same thing with the municipal agent. We have a really good working relationship with her already because one of my colleagues partners with her to do um, senior craft programming every month. Um, so I just shot her an email and said, here's what I want to do. Is there any way that you can write me a letter um, just stating that, you know, your budget is really limited and you're not using it for um, healthcare related purposes. And she said, no problem. And she sent it over and it, it was very easy. Um, but if, if you are a larger library or you're one that's not attached to your town hall, um, it's, 
it, it's a great idea to build those relationships with town leaders um, because they can really help you in situations like this and support you. I think it also goes to show that I think even if you don't necessarily have a good reason, so even if there's not necessarily like a grant that's already on your horizon that you could benefit from with partnerships, it just goes to show you already had a relationship. So then when you sort of started to go down this path, you know, like the the dominoes were kind of already set up for you. So I think that's just another plug for the importance of partnerships as if, as if we need any more. But um, so what so you, you this is a small town what about the makeup of your library because i know that um with some projects a lot of folks um can wonder you know like well we don't have a whole lot of staff we don't have a whole lot of time at our fingertips um so so you know what's kind of the makeup of your library with regards to staffing and things like that and then how much staff time did this take i mean did you just kind of do this all on your own <laughs> So, um, we have, oh, it's, I think there's like a core of five of us right now. Um, we have a couple of employees that are still, um, hesitant to come in just because of COVID. Um, and all of us are part-time with the exception of my director. Um, so <laughs> it makes it a little bit trickier. Um, but luckily we were able to have enough staffing when I was doing this, that I could sit in the back and work on the grant application while my colleagues sat at the desk and kind of handled patrons and phone calls and all of that. Um, I didn't have to take any extra time on my own to do any of this. Um, I had initially built into my budget proposal um, staff time for me to work on this, but it actually all worked out where I could do it um, during our slow times. Um, so it Overall, it didn't take me a ton of time. Um, the biggest thing was just looking into ordering items for the memory kits, um, the collection development portion of it, and then um, the budget. Um, that was really the biggest chunk of my time. I also had to complete um, a five-part e-course on how to facilitate community conversations through the American Library Association. So that took a little bit of time as well. Um, but I was very fortunate that I could do most of it while I'm here at the library on during my shift um, while my colleagues just filled in and my director filled in. Um, I think because we're so small, but we have enough staff to make sure that we're meeting all the needs of our users. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you, did you find just, I, this is not one of the questions that I had written down, but did you find the, the ALA course and community conversations helpful? Yes. Um, it was very helpful. Um, they actually had clips featuring recipients from the first round where they gave um, examples of how they had carried out their community conversations, how they had facilitated conversations. Um, they had examples of other grants that had been picked as winners from the first round too. So that helped me when it came to writing my own grant. Um, and they also sent me a book on how to facilitate community conversations, which was fantastic. And I still have access to all of that content. So it was very helpful. Um, it really clarified my role as a facilitator versus a presenter. Um, yeah, wow. so it was, it was great. Talk about setting someone up for success. <laughs> I mean, goodness gracious. Yes. Um, and then I was wondering, how, so how many kits have you put together? So we have six total. Um, more due to lack of space um, for, for storing them. Um, so yeah, we have six. And like I said before, I just really tried to go with different themes for each one. Um, I have the tinkering one. I have an entertainment one that focuses solely on music and movies from the 50s and 60s. Um, I have a gardening one, um, a nature one, and I'm trying to recall the other... <laughs> The other couple that we have. An extra we, couple. Yeah. <laughs> so are but they, are all, they big? Are they like really so like suitcase size? Like what? No. no, no. <laughs> okay. So I was able to fit them in just a, a Tupperware oh. with. Yep. So it's not, not huge. I can easily lift it, carry it. I wanted to make it so that they weren't too heavy um, and they weren't too big and bulky to transport because if somebody checks one out and brings one to say their mom who's in a nursing facility, it's easy to, to carry around with them. Um, right. Yeah, so 
that was that was really a priority when it came to this. I chose items that were small enough to all fit inside of those Tupperware. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we try, we try to do that a lot at the service center too with our kits, especially when we know people are going to be taking them places. And I guess my last question is, is I, I feel obvious, but I'm really interested in hearing. So what's been the response? What's been the response from, from caretakers, um, from your patrons who, you know, are going through sort of the stages or on the spectrum of dementia? Like what's, what's this, this been like for your community since you've, you've integrated these memory kits? Yeah, I'm really glad you asked that question um, because the overall response has been very positive. Um, We actually just had another conversation last week and afterwards several people came up to me and said, you know, thank you for highlighting this as an issue in our community. Um, I take care of so-and-so at home. I'm very overwhelmed. I just don't know what to do. I'm going to come in and check out, you know, multiple kits because I think it's it's great. We've also had people um, asking for us to do more, so to restart our caregiver support group. So we're working with the Alzheimer's Association um, to get that up and going again. Um, I'm actually now looking into starting memory ca- a memory cafe here um, to give caregivers a little bit of, of respite time. Um, so a lot has actually stemmed out of this, which has been great because the initial reaction has been really positive and then people are like well now we're more aware of this and we're aware that the library can actually offer these resources so what else can you do for us um so it's been a challenge but it's been a good one and i'm so excited to see what the future holds for this um initiative as well as what else we can do so it's it's been great um and all of my colleagues are really um, motivated, you know, to learn more about dementia. Um, I'm looking to possibly get some training for my colleagues at some point to make us more of a dementia friendly library. So it's been really positive overall, um, and well received. Well, I, I, we could probably do this all day, and I'm sure you're going to get quite a few emails once this once this releases. But thank you so much for your time, you know, explaining all of this. Um, I've been writing things down like a mad person, you know, like in in what way can additional support be provided? Um, because I think you're right. I think, I think it's so easy to forget or to just never know in the first place that that there's such a need for the type of services that you're providing. Um, so thank you for all of your hard work and for talking to us. And I know folks are are going to be typing your email address into their into their two line immediately. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you too. And please, anybody, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I am more than happy to answer questions. I feel like there's a lot of content, um, so it was hard to, you know, whittle it down into 20 minutes. Um, so please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I am more than happy to answer questions and provide information. So thank you. Thank you.